close your eyes, focus on your breath. When you breathe in, know you're breathing in. When you breathe out, know you're breathing out. Pay careful attention right here. You want to give as much attention and as much care to this as you can, because it's the care and the attention that make a difference. As for other things right now, you can put them aside. They're not your business right now. Your business is learning to train the mind, develop good qualities in mind, like mindfulness, the ability just to keep something in mind, and alertness, the ability to know what's going on. If you're not mindful and alert, it's really hard to gain any control over the mind. The thought comes up, and you just run right into the thought, and then thought takes you away. It's like a car driving up at the side of the road. You jump right in before you know who's driving or where they're going. If you keep jumping into your thought worlds like this, you'll never see how they happen, where they come from. You have to be able to step outside them, and you have to keep remembering to stay outside them. That's something you can learn. That's a, a skill that you can develop, some area where you can begin to exert some control over the mind. So you can end up thinking the thoughts you want to think, and you don't have to suffer the thoughts you don't want to think. This is really important. They have a very clear notion of where our area of control is and where it's not. Because sometimes you read the Buddha teaching about equanimity, it sounds like he wants you to be equanimous and sort of indifferent to everything. And that's not what he's teaching at all. He wants you to be able to make the distinction where are the areas where you can exert some control and where are the areas you can't. And the areas where you can't exert control, where you can't be helpful to yourself, can't be helpful to other people. Because those are the things you have to develop equanimity for. We live in this world. There's aging, illness, and death. Okay, We can do our best so we don't have to suffer from it. But the things are still going to happen anyhow. And we can help the people around us, but they're going to have to grow ill and age and die at some point, too. That's something you can't help. So those are the things you have to develop equanimity around. But you can focus on the area of to what extent do we have to suffer from these things. There may be pain, but the mind doesn't have to suffer from the pain. There may be aging and death, but the mind doesn't have to suffer from the aging and death. So that's the area where you want to focus your attention, to develop the qualities of mind that will help you so you don't have to suffer from these things. As for things that you can't help, you let them go, let them go. That's what equanimity is for. Equanimity has to be paired with discernment, wisdom, so you can know where the dividing line is. So you're not just equanimous about things that you really can make a difference about. Say, well, this is just my habit, this is just the way I do things, and you don't make any effort to change. That's not using intelligent equanimity. As one Forrester John once said, that's the equanimity of a water buffalo. They just sit around and do nothing. Equanimous, okay, things, good things happen, they're equanimous. Bad things happen, they're equanimous. They don't have any intelligence to make any difference. But we're human beings. We have that intelligence. So one of the important parts of training the mind is see where the difference is. What are the things you can control? And you learn how to develop the skills in the mind so you really can control your thoughts, can control the qualities of the mind, can control your decisions. As for things that lie beyond that, you let them go, because they're not your responsibility. Once you make this distinction, then equanimity becomes a real aid to the mind in helping you to really make a difference in your life. So you can train the mind so you really don't cause suffering to yourself, don't so cause suffering to other people around you. That's something you don't want to be equanimous about. You don't want to just sit around and accept where things are right now. If there's an area where you can make a change, go ahead and make it. Make sure that you're doing it for the better. Make sure you're making it more and more skillful. And as for other things, you can let them go. Because otherwise you spend all your, waste all your time trying to change things you can't change and the things you could res be responsible for don't get treated at all. So make sure you learn how to make this distinction clearly, what you can learn how to control and what you can't. And then learn how to respond properly in each case. <laughs>